Hey everyone, Greg Kazillo from Kazillo.com. I forgot to put this into the earlier video about displaying photographs, so I figured I would just make a whole nother video dealing with this subject, and that's on making a contact sheet or a proof sheet in Lightroom. You can also do this in Photoshop. I'm sure there's plenty of tutorials out there that show you how to do it, but since I love to use Lightroom, I'm going to show you how to do it in Lightroom. So I have these eight photos, and I had a question from and a comment from someone. Well, what if they don't have a choice? What if the people are traveling, or people are overseas, or uh, want to show photos, and you have to post them online? And you don't have a gallery already. Well, that's when I would go into Lightroom and I would make a contact sheet. So to select all the photos first that you want to add to the contact sheet, then head over to your print module. All right, and this this works in three. This works in Adobe um, Lightroom 3, it works in 4, I don't know why I'm not going over to the print module here, there we go. Alright, so this can automatically make a, a print package, quote unquote, uh, or what I call a contact sheet. Contact sheet can't, comes from back in the day when we were shooting negatives, we would take that entire sheet of negatives, print it on a single 8x10 sheet of paper, and we could see each photo in a positive instead of in a negative. So um, that's what we used to do back in the day, and so we can still do that and uh, watermark our photos, protect ourselves, as well as make it easy for the client to pick out the photos. So I already have some templates set up and some presets, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, start from scratch from one of my presets that are already in here. So first, let I'm going to browse through and find one that gets us close. Um, so let's just choose this, no, let's just choose this 4 by 5 contact sheet. That's prob that'll probably work out well. So you should have that template, 4 by 5 contact sheet. Let's go ahead and choose that. And uh, then we're just going to go down the line to font to set all of our settings. We're going to create our own package. First, we need to make sure that we have different photos in each of these, which is exactly what we have. It's not the same photo being duplicated every time, so that's what we have. Um, we don't want this zoom to fill, rotate to fill, uh, one photo per page turned on, stroke border, totally up to you. Uh, layout. Next thing, I think I'm actually going to, let me get down here first, and resolution, page. I'm actually going to resize this if I can remember how to do it. It's been so long since I did this, I can't seem to remember how to do it. Um, let's just do it this way. I'm going to turn my rows actually up and my columns down. Okay, I want two columns and I'm going to do three rows. That makes the photos a little bit bigger. Actually, let's go to four. Can we fit four? Um, horizontal. So basically, I'm just playing with these. I have my margins turned off. And I'm just playing with these until I have a good setting. There we go. That's what I wanted to see right there. All right, so we have three photos. We can see all the photos on a single page. All right, works out very nicely. Uh, image settings, we went through that, layout, we just, again, just play with these until you get it right, until you get it how you like it. Alright, guides, don't really need to show guides in this particular instance. Guides are more for cutting the photos. If you're going to be actually printing on your own, you can print a guide and it'll make it easier for you to cut it out. Um, next to page, if you add identity plate and then render on every image, that works as a watermark. Alright, then you can choose your identity plate if you have different ones uh, you can change your font if you want I use a certain font let's see if it's showing up there we go and uh, on the PC I can type alt 0169 it'll give me the copyright symbol I can click OK and then we can where's my size let's see I know there's a way to adjust the size of this Oh, scale. Yeah, right there, dummy. All right, so there I'm gonna run, I'm gonna adjust the scale so that it's big, and I'm gonna turn down my opacity so it's more of a watermark. But ta-da, it's rendered on every image. Works out really nicely. 
all right and um, next thing come down the page a little bit if you want page numbers you can add page numbers or info if it makes it a little bit easier for you crop marks again don't really need those page info if you needed to put that in there um, photo info that's the next one we're really going to deal with here and we're going to edit now we can add any or all of this information into our box right here I'm going to clear this out and show you how to do it you're going to choose the information that you want and then you're going to click insert and then you're going to hit a space and then you're going to go down to say um, say you wanted to add the title okay or you wanted to add the copyright all right, we're going to hit insert. Uh, say you wanted to hit custom text. Um, I don't know, just custom, an area for custom text. Let me put it that way. There we go, custom text. And so we can hit done. And then custom text will be text. And it'll automatically fill that text in for us there underneath each of the files, which works out really nicely. Change our font size if we wanted to make it a little bit smaller. Finally, we're to our print job, all right? We can print it to a printer, which wouldn't make sense if we're emailing this, or we can send it to a JPEG file, all right? Resolution at 150 is plenty. JPEG quality is fine. This is what I was looking for earlier, custom file dimensions. If we make this 11 by 8.5 and make it horizontal, and then change our layout, the photos get bigger. Two, three rows I guess it is photos are a little bigger when we do this there we go alright and we can also come back down here to page and we can make our font size a little bit bigger there you go so it makes it a little bit nicer a little bit easier to see alright so now we're all done where everything is set where we want it to be. Now we're going to come over here and create a new preset. All right, we're going to hit the little plus sign and we're going to save it as a custom contact sheet and um, nine up. That means nine per page. All right, we're going to hit create and there it saved our template down here in the bottom right there. All right, now let's print to a file. All right, and let's see. So we're gonna go to our desktop right here and give it a file name. I'm just gonna call it 2012 for right now. And we're gonna hit save. It's going to export all those files for me. Actually, there's only one. So there's the file right there. All right, and there's our JPEG file. We could just email this just this JPEG file if we wanted to to the client and we'd be done. If you had multiples of these, if you had a couple of these, you could then take these JPEG files and if you have Adobe Acrobat Pro or another PDF writer, you can then create a PDF from multiple files which will make it even easier to collect them all in one file. Uh, I have found in my experience that Lightroom has a hard time printing directly to a PDF. I don't know why, but it seems to. Um, I don't know if it's something in my setup or what, but I've had difficulty getting this to use the uh, Acrobat printer driver and print it right into a PDF. So um, I print it into a JPEG and then I collect them into a single binder, a single PDF file for, before I email it out. So um, I think that's everything. So questions, comments, concerns, love to hear them. I'm going to post this up for you as another idea for sending your photos out to clients. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. See ya.